Tell me, do you bleed? Uh, I don't know, but I know you do. Nope, 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 nope. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. Today, I'm taking a look at the DC Multiverse Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Armored Batman by McFarlane Toys. Starting with the packaging, and even this has me more excited than usual. In the past, I've been pretty critical of movie-style DC Multiverse boxes, mainly just all the clutter of repetitive names and logos. Here, we just have our clean, simple DC Multiverse logo. But see that colorful corner? That leads to movie-specific graphics on the side. It's a small thing, but it really helps it to pop. For those searching for Batman in store, here's the UPC. And then on the back, we get some promotional imagery from the movie. And wouldn't you know it, it absolutely matches what's in the box. After Hugo Strange and the question, that makes me pretty happy. Another thing that McFarlane did was swap out the usual insert tray with a Batman v Superman themed one. It might be a small thing, but I really appreciate the effort. And because I firmly believe in rewarding effort for packaging, I'm giving Armored Batman, five points. Moving on to presentation, and to the top of his scalp, Armored Batman stands at a statuesque seven and a half inches, or 19 centimeters, and is a complete total 1,000% all new sculpt. And I gotta tell ya, this one is something special. I know Batman always gets the preferential treatment, but to see this much care and attention and just plastic in a regular release is mind-boggling. I know it's more of a conversation for price, but the fact that this was just 23 bucks just Wow. Every single line and panel and scratch and ding is accounted for. Fortunately, the shoulder pauldrons are nice and soft. And again, just look at all the painted detail in there. Even in the textured undersuit. One thing I'm particularly enamored by is this belt rung across the chest. They did such a good job texturing the fabric. It really does look just like the cape. And I know I'm jumping ahead a bit, but this cape is unlike any one that McFarlane's given us before. Not only is it a completely different fabric that has a wonderful knit in it, but it's even all shredded and tattered at the bottom to give it that authentic movie look. All that and it's wired? Flipping that cape up, they did not skimp on either the sculpted or painted detail back here, and the more I look at it, the more details I find. One detail I love are the spiky bits on the boots, taken straight out of the Dark Knight Returns. Going back to the head, and I love it. Although the eyes don't light up, the paint is so vivid and stark it kind of looks like they do, and the little bit of Batflex face we see has been done very well. To be honest, I only have two criticisms. One, I really wish the diaper ended with the belt. I just think it would have looked a lot better without that extra sliver. Also, the ankle articulation. Not only is it really gappy and obvious, but I will say I do have a bit of a hard time getting him to balance. Granted, that's more of a conversation for posability. As for this category, though, this figure is a masterpiece. For presentation, I'm giving Armored Batman five points. Moving on to posability, and given how bulky and restrictive the armor itself is, I think we can be a bit forgiving about some of the limitations of the figure. That said, there is one choice I see being pretty polarizing, and one issue carrying over from the previous category. First things first, and let's start with the head. While it's a dumbbell joint like usual, the armor does get in the way. In fact, he can only look up this far. As a reminder, here's straight ahead, and then he only gets this far down. It also gets in the way of tilt, but there is still some tilt there, and of course we do get a bit of side to side. Again though, because because of the design of the armor, this doesn't bother me personally. It would be nice if he could look up a little bit higher, but this isn't bad. Moving down, he can raise his arm 90 degrees, if not a centimeter or two above it, and thanks to that soft shoulder pauldron, there's no trouble with rotation. Batsy also has rotator cuffs, giving him a bit of forward and back, as well as bicep swivel, which don't even get a 90 degree bend. This is the part I could see people being pretty unhappy about. At the ends of the arms though, and we have our typical McFarlane wrist balls that can swivel and hinge up or down or side to side. Moving to the middle, an armored Batman has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. He can arch back this far. Just as a reminder, here he is standing straight, and he can only hunch forward this far. Given how bulky and chunky this armor is, I do feel 
feel like it's reasonable that it's going to hinder him a bit. Again, I can't help but wonder if ditching that small sliver of diaper would help. Below that bright gold utility belt, and of course he has the typical McFarlane hips. Batman can kick about 90 degrees, which is pretty good. And despite the bulky armor, still get a near-perfect split. While nothing can beat a thigh cut, the amount of twist is really good this time around. And of course we've got double-jointed knees, meat tenderizing, toe articulation, and ankle balls that can swivel, hinge, and like Batman going from a bloodthirsty maniac to Superman's friend cracking jokes with his mom at the mere mention of her name, pivot. And again, it's the ankles I'm having the biggest issue with. The figure is just so bulky and the pegs are so narrow it's really hard to find that sweet spot and the detents in the ankle ball make it all the harder. Don't get me wrong, I can get him there, it just takes a few tries. For poseability, I'm giving Batfleck a still okay, three points. Moving on to playability and in terms of accessories there isn't much to talk about here. Uh, of course we've got our tried and true trading card and figure stand. That features the same artwork as the box and a very short bio you could probably read in the amount of time it takes me to tell you to pause here if you want to read it. Otherwise, and it all comes down to hands. Bruce has these accessory holding ones we've been looking at throughout the video. He also has a left fist, and this thing was hard to get on. So hard, in fact, that I actually cut my finger against the fins. There's also an open right hand that was much easier to get on, but I can't help but wish that he would have come with two fists. That said, and again, he does come with this wired cape, and I really can't speak highly enough of it. What McFarlane is accomplishing with capes at this price point is really impressive. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting with some of the other DC Multiverse bat flex that brought us here, and here is the Justice League tactical suit. This one's the ultimate movie six-pack version. Otherwise, here is the Flash. There is a Platinum Edition with the corrected color scheme, but I don't have any plans of picking it up. More importantly, and here we have the regular Dawn of Justice Batman. Really gives you an appreciation for just how big and bulky that armor is. For some comic style Batman comparisons though, and here we have three Jokers in DC Rebirth, blue and gray and black and gray versions of Hush standing eye to eye, blue and gray and black and gray versions of Nightfall, and just because it feels comparable in terms of value, here's the armored Batfleck with the Hellbat armor and Batman in his armor from Kingdom Come. Again, basic retail. Really shows you what's possible in terms of value. As long as we're looking at those, we might as well whip out Superman's Unchained armor, moving us squarely from the Dark Knight to the Man of Steel. Here's Action Comics 1000 and Hush versions of Superman, along with DC Classic on the Page Puncher's body and Mullet Superman on the Dark Knight Returns body, and the Earth 2 Superman with his very own body. Of course, for the comparison you all want to see, and here we have the original blue and red Targ exclusive Henry Cavill. Otherwise, for a relative scale comparison, and here's Armored Batman with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. You know it's funny how both of us are billionaire playboy philanthropist superheroes? Uh-huh. And yet, when you wear armor, people lose their minds, but I wear it all the time. You were never stealth, and you're only half an Iron Man. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You kiss Martha with that mouth? How about we ask the Winter Soldier about your mom? Alright, you know what? Maybe we got off on the wrong foot. You don't even have a foot. You know what? I give up. He might not come with everything but the kitchen sink, but the extra hands are appreciated. Though I think I would have appreciated a right-handed fist even more. If you want even more accessories, you could always track down the two-pack with Nightmare Batman. In addition to a battle-damaged helmet, he has a grenade launcher, gas can, and grapnel gun. Otherwise, in terms of play value, the wired cape does a lot of the heavy lifting, docking him only because he can't give Superman the old right hook. For playability, Armored Batman gets four points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. If you didn't pre-order this figure but see him in the wild, get him. Because if there's even a 1% chance of missing out on this figure, you have to take it as an absolute certainty. You see what I did there? Regardless of how you feel about the movie's interpretation of the world's finest, this figure is one of DC Multiverse's finest. For price, I'm giving Armored Batman 5 points, averaging out to a very good total of 4.4 4 out of 5. Given how much value is in the box, there is one other accessory that they skimped on. That, however, is a conversation for another day. For more Batfleck videos, check out one of these, and until next time, play nice and have fun.